Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have discussed about the structure of water, structure of ice as well as the physical properties of water. And now we are going to discuss about the chemical properties of water. So what are the different properties that could be exhibited by water? That is what we are going to talk about in this topic. So let us start with that. So talking about the few properties of water, the first one let me talk about that, that is water is basically amphoteric in nature and that is what we know. And uh, let me discuss about that, that how basically water is amphoteric in nature. So talking about the amphoteric nature of water uh, means that water can act like an acid as well as it can act like a base. And that is what I am going to talk about in terms of a reaction where we could uh, prove that basically water is basically acting like a acid also as well as it can act like a base. So let me discuss about uh, the uh, uh, process where basically water is basically reacted with uh, that is NH3 or it has been dissolved with NH3. So let us see what happens. So whenever basically water that is H2 is been reacted or it has been treated with ammonia that is NH3 which is what we know it is a base. So obviously when uh, a substance which is acting like a base so that we should get a product and in this case basically the ionized product that we could get is basically it is OH minus along with that of NH4 plus. But according to Lowry Brosted theory, we know that uh, the one which uh, donates the lone pair of electron is basically is acting like a base, and the one which uh, uh, accepts the lone pair of electron that acts like an acid. So, this is what we have discussed in the chemical equilibrium also in the chapter chemical equilibrium. But let me discuss about this again. That is, uh, since we know about ammonia, that uh, ammonia has a lone pair of electron on the nitrogen on it, that's the reason we could say that it is a base. But whenever it is been treated with water, that is uh, whenever NH3 combines with that of the hydrogen of the water molecule so as to form NH4, in this case basically the hydrogen uh, atom of the water molecule, it is the one that is basically that is accepting the lone pair of electron from nitrogen of ammonia and that is the reason that the hydrogen which is present in the water is basically it is acting like an acid, then only it will form that is NH4 plus. Suppose in this case, suppose if I am talking about this product, then in this case basically we could know that this is OH minus, obviously this will have a lone pair of electron on it. And uh, that is the reason that uh, the lone pair of electron would be able to combine with the hydrogen of the NH4 plus that is ammonium ion so as to form the water molecule. Because it is a uh, equilibrium is been established over here. So that is the reason this OH minus is, it is acting like a base over here. So therefore we could say that uh, whenever the H2 is been treated with uh, a base which is stronger uh, than it. So therefore in this case basically this H2 is acting like an acid and that only other product have been formed. So this was a treatment uh, when uh, the H2 was been treated with uh, NH3. But what will happen if H2 is treated with uh, strong acid like HCl. Suppose if we have that is H2. And if you are treating it with HCl, and we know that uh, it is very much soluble in the water, but suppose if an equilibrium is established so that uh, we could form or we could get that is uh, H3O plus along with that of Cl minus. So these are the two possible products that we could get whenever uh, that is uh, H2O is treated with HCl and the equilibrium has been established over here. But uh, if you observe that is uh, in this case HCl, in HCl basically uh, the, it is a very strong acid that's the reason it can easily lose its uh, H plus ion. So that's the reason that H plus uh, ions are is be lost from uh, the HCl while it is getting dissociated and that H plus is been accepted by this H2O and since we know that uh, the oxygen has a lone pair of electron on it that's the reason that it will accept the H plus ion or basically we could say that the lone pair of electron on the oxygen is been able to grab this hydrogen H plus ion and that's the reason that it will act like a base. So that is how basically we could say that uh, water is something which is acting like an acid also or which could act like a base also and that's the reason that because of this two property that are being exhibited by the same molecule makes it to be called as an amphoteric molecule and this is what I want to talk about the first that is chemical property of water. So there are also few properties that I am going to discuss about so let us start with the next one and that is 
So we know that water is basically a universal solvent. So that's the reason that uh, it has the capacity to basically to dissolve uh, most of the organic compounds as well as inorganic compounds also. So based on that uh, thing, that is during this reaction or during this process, basically a redox reaction can also take place. And that is what I want to talk about, that water also plays a very important role in that redox reaction. And uh, let me discuss about uh, the example over here, where uh, I'm going to discuss about that. What happens if basically sodium, is basically it is treated with uh, that is H2 and what are the process product that we could uh, get so whenever sodium has been added in water obviously it is a vigorous reaction and that's the reason that uh, we could get that is a base like NaOH but the thing is the product that we could get is basically NaOH along with that of H2 in this case it is not been balanced so we have to balance it so what I'm doing is I'm just uh, making this stoichiometry this form so that we could get uh, now it is in proper proportion but now how this reaction undergoes in a redox process or in, in a redox reaction let me discuss about that also if you talk about this sodium this sodium has an oxidation state of zero so and this is what we have discussed in uh, that is uh, the redox reaction chapter also but uh, let me give a glimpse of this so this is the oxygen which is having an oxidation state of uh, zero while uh, talking about uh, the uh, oxygen atom over here or since we are talking about the hydrogen atom in this case it is basically it is the one which is having an oxidation state of plus one so this is what i'm discussing about and while basically we could see that uh, during this reaction we could see that NaOH has been produced and if we talk about the oxidation state of this uh, Na uh, that is this sodium uh, in NaOH it has been found to be it is found to be plus one by talking about this hydrogen this hydrogen has an oxidation state of zero so if you observe that is the sodium it basically it oxidizes from zero to plus one oxidation state that's the reason it is basically it is oxidation while if you observe about the hydrogen in water and uh, since it has been converted into H2, so therefore we could see that uh, the oxidation number has been reduced to zero from plus one to zero. Obviously it is a reduction process. So in this reaction basically oxidation and reduction, the both the reaction takes place simultaneously and that's the reason that it is a redox reaction. So that's the reason I have explained earlier also that water plays a very important role in the giving the redox reactions also. So it is not the only reaction that it takes place over here. During photosynthesis also the redox reaction takes place. So let me discuss about that also. So if you say that is during photosynthesis, basically the carbon dioxide uh, that has been intake uh, by the uh, plants or trees. So in that case basically that uh, carbon dioxide is basically used for making food like glucose. So glucose is the one that is uh, a very good source of energy and uh, that is how basically the reaction takes place and that is what I am going to talk about here. That is uh, whenever that is uh, 6 moles of carbon dioxide is being reacted with uh, water and that is what is present in the plants suppose. So in this case basically I am just discussing about that biological factor over here that how the reaction takes place that is 6 moles of CO2 is been reacted with the 12 moles of H2O that the product that we could get is basically C6H12O6 along with that of 6 moles of H2O along with that of 6 moles of that is O2. So this is what we have got over here but how basically the, re the redox reaction has been taken place over here. So if we talk about the carbon over here so the carbon has a valency of plus 4. So we could say that the oxidation number is also plus 4 over here. So, but ultimately whenever it has been uh, converting it to that is carbon that is C6, H12, O6 that could be glucose also, fructose also. So in this process basically the oxidation number will change. And similarly if we talk about that is this H2O. So in this case the oxide has an oxidation state of uh, that is uh, minus 2. But whenever it has been uh, oxidized to oxygen that is O2, the oxygen has an oxidation state of 0. So obviously we could say that uh, here basically uh, oxidation reaction has been taken place while from carbon dioxide the carbon which has an oxidation state or oxidation number of plus 4 it has been converting into that is uh, lesser than uh, that is plus 4 so therefore we could say that the reduction has been taken place. So this is how basically the redox reaction plays a very vital role and this is basically the uh, chemical property of water that I want to discuss about. So these are the two uh, chemical properties that is one was uh, amphotonic nature of water and uh, this one is basically a redox reaction that takes place. So, so these are the two things but let me discuss about the other two properties also and those are next property that I'm going to talk about is basically hydrolysis that has been exhibited by the water molecule. So what are those? Let me talk about that. 
So as I have discussed earlier, that is water is basically a universal solvent and that's the reason it has the capacity to dissolve or to solvate most of the organic as well as inorganic compounds. So let me discuss about this thing where we could see an example of hydrolysis. So for an example, suppose if I'm talking about calcium oxide. So whenever calcium oxide is been treated with water or uh, so basically kind of hydrolysis reaction takes place and the product that we could get is basically calcium hydroxide. So in this case, basically the reaction is undergoing hydrolysis process. So similarly, it can also give a reaction where we could find that uh, it, uh, for example, in uh, organic reactions also, that is uh, hydrolysis of uh, methyl acetate. Even that is a process where the uh, H2O is been able to break those molecules so as to form that is acetic acid and uh, methanol. But uh, there are also inorganic reactions that I'm going to discuss about. So for example, if I'm talking about calcium carbide, that is CaC2. Whenever CaC2, that is calcium carbide, is being uh, treated with water, so therefore a kind of hydrolysis reaction takes place, and the product that we could get is is basically an ethyl, that is C2H2, along with that of that is uh, CaOH twice, that is this calcium hydroxide. So this was one of those uh, reactions I was talking about the hydrolysis, and that is possible because of the water only. And uh, Talking about the last topic, let me discuss about that also. The next property that has been exhibited by water is basically formation of hydrates and that is only possible because of water. So let me discuss about this point that is uh, the fourth uh, uh, chemical property of water that is formation of hydrates. So now let me talk about the formation of hydrates and this is only possible because of the water molecule. So in this case basically the water is not basically reacted with uh, the other atoms or uh, it is not reacted with the other molecules but in fact it get associated with it in the form of various different factors like it could be a hydrogen bonding also or it could be kind of a cord uh, covalent bond also and there are different types of uh, the hydrates that are being formed and that is what I'm going to discuss about here so one of those hydrates are basically the first one that I'm going to talk about is uh, coordinated water hydrate so in this case let me uh, give you an example in this case basically most of the complex uh, if I talk about so here is one of the complex that I'm going to discuss that is uh, suppose if chromium has a complex which is formed in this form that is CrH2O six times and this is basically here we have discussed in this form so you could see that the water molecule is basically it is acting like a ligand and that is what it is forming a coordination covalent bond coordinate covalent bond with the, the chromium and this is what the complex has been formed so even this in this case basically water is not reacting with chromium it is basically it is attached with chromium so this is one of uh, those hydrates uh, hydrates that I, I was talking about and let me discuss about the other one that is interstitial water hydrates so in this case suppose if i am talking about a molecule like uh, suppose bacl2 so this is basically uh, that is a, a barium chloride and because of this also because of most of the ionic crystals are basically they can form a hydrate uh, of uh, those crystals and that is what uh, basically water molecules can be associated with it so this is how basically the h2o is basically is occupied within the crystal and that's the reason that they are known as uh, interstitial water hydrates and this is what uh, I've discussed about this thing and uh, so there are various examples like CuSO4 5 times uh, H2O that is pentahydrate so even that is an example of uh, interstitial water where uh, uh, basically water is present in the interstitial phase uh, in the in the crystal of CuSO4 so let me discuss about the last one and uh, that is hydrogen bonded water molecules and uh, that is what I am going to discuss about here. Basically, suppose if I take an example that is uh, Cu H2 5 times, it has an uh, oxidation state of this 2 plus and along with that of that is SO4 2 minus with H2O. So, here basically the hydrogen bonding uh, is also been formed over here and how. As I have discussed earlier, that is this H2O which is acting like a ligand, it will form bond with the chromium. And similarly, here also basically five H2 molecules that can form bond with uh, the copper molecule. And uh, the bond is basically known as coordination covalent bond. But if you talk about this water molecule, this water molecule is basically it is not forming a coordination bond with uh, the copper. In fact, it is forming a hydrogen bond with this complex. And that's the reason that I have written this H2O that is uh, outside this square bracket. And this is what basically the properties of water that I was discussing about. And that's it. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood the different chemical properties of water. And that's it. So I hope you will share this video with your friends. And yes, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much.